Okay, class, so now we're going to do the, uh, let me show you how to do Lab 7, which corresponds to Chapter 6 in the textbook. And this is using Minitab to find confidence intervals and sample sizes. Okay, so the first set of problems are, um, Matt, go with 6.2, which is finding a confidence interval to estimate the population proportion P. See, right here, confidence interval estimate of the population proportion P. So the first one, they gave it, they give us all the values that we need for Minitab. So let's open up Minitab and we go to stat, basic stat, one proportion, stat, basic stat, one proportion. And in this case, what we had is the summarized data. So let's click that. The number of events is the X, and in this case, X was 300. And the number of trials was N, which given in the problem was 400. We are not performing a hypothesis test, so don't click that. We go to options, and here the confidence level is asked for in number one is 95, but notice in number two it says 99. You just changed this to 99. You need to make sure the alternative is set to not equal to, which it is. Now, this is a little different than what I talked about in the lecture. This is a newer version of Minitab. And now, instead of doing, we have a choice of the exact or the normal approximation. When you're doing the problems homework in the book, that textbook is using the normal approximation. So if you want to check your answers in the back of the book, and that's why I always give you the odd problem so you can check your answers in the back of the book for homework, you, you need to use the normal approximation, which is the formulas that you saw, or you can use Minitab for homework, right? I've told you that many times. So, but in this case, if we have the choice of the exact value, let's use it. So let's do the exact value, click OK, and click OK, and here is our 95% confidence interval. So we are 95% confident that the true population proportion is somewhere between 70.46% and 79.17%. All right. Now let's move on to number five because I think that's another that's a prop one that you may have a, a few issues with. In this case, we're given that. There is 1,025 adults surveyed, so that's our N. But instead of giving our X explicitly like they do up here, they told us that 29% of this 1,025 said yes, that they use the Internet for shopping. So we need to approximate what 29% of 1025 should be. And then when we do that, um, we're going to... Um, find the 99% confidence interval. Now the point estimate is the 29%. So the answer to A is 29% or 0.29, however you want to state it. But now to find the 99% confidence interval for the true proportion of adults who use the internet for shopping, we're going to need to make a, a we're going to have to use our calculator for a minute. So stat, basic stat, one proportion. Now, in this case, we were told that the number of trials was 1,025, but we were given the percent, not the actual value. So I, we need to find out what is 29% of 1,025. So 1,025 times 0 0.29 is 297.25. Um, in this case, you can you can use you can either use 297 which would be the rounding rule or you can use 298 but you cannot use 297.25 because number of events a number of something has to either be 297 or 298 some statisticians would use the rounding rule and take this down because it's 0.25 would leave it at the 297 others would say that Anytime you have, you need 0.25 of a person, you need to hold another person. So either way is correct. 
I'm going to leave it at 297. Options, now the confidence inter interval for number 5 was to find a 99%. So I need to change that to 99. Make sure the alternative is set to not equal to. And I'm going to use the exact method. Click OK. And here is my 99% confidence growth. So it says that 29% of that 1,025 said that they use the internet for shopping. But if we if we were interested in all adults, then we would we can be 99% confident that about 25.38%. And 32.77% of all adults use the internet for shopping. Okay, so there's a few more problems in here that go with proportion, and it will always say, for example, let me show you here, find a 95% confidence interval of the percentage. Percentage and proportion are the same. Find a 99% confidence for the proportion. Number eight, though, changes. It says construct a 98% confidence interval for the mean. So now we're going to change this. Now in the text, your, your um, author speaks of the, the, the more theoretic, which is the one sample Z. It is extremely rare that if you are having to estimate the mean, that you actually know the population standard deviation. So even though that was covered in the textbook, in this mini tab lab, there's only one place that it, it would be, and I'll show it to you in a minute. So now let's do number eight, which is the first time we're going to be using the one sample T. To do that, I need to, to put those values into the to, into mini tabs. So here this is, let me just call it pollution. And now let me put those numbers in, and I have 0 0.06, 0 0.16, Okay. So I have 0 0.06, let me check this, 0 0.11, 0 0.16, 0 0.15, 0 0.14, 0 0.08, 0 0.15. Okay, so now we want to construct a 98% confidence interval to estimate the mean. That's a one sample T stat, basic stat, one sample T. Minitab does do a one sample Z, so if you have homework problems with a one sample Z, you can use Minitab to do your homework. But because there was not, it did not say from a previous study, it's known that the population standard deviation was, that makes it, makes it a one sample T. Now my sample is in a column, so I leave that one or more samples each in a column, click this in, go to options, and this one asked me to do a 98, so let me do 98, click OK, click OK, and so I am 98% confident that the average nitrogen emission, nitrogen oxide emission in all cars is somewhere between 7.52% and 16.77%. All right, so we are going to continue looking at um, the one sample finding the mean, but I, for, I told you I would show you which one actually is the only one on this worksheet that is using the one sample Z, and that's part A and number 10. Notice it says, assuming that sigma is known to be 121.8. In this case, you're going to use the one sample Z, but in part B, you're going to do the one sample T, and then you're going to compare the two results and see which one has a wider interval which and which one that, or which one has a smaller interval, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do part A since it's a little bit different. We're going to a different place. So we go to, um, okay, we have to open up a data set. So I need to open and my mini tab data set I saved here. And we're using bears. Okay, so 
And so here's my bare data set. And I want to find a 95% confidence interval for the average of all bears' weights. So we're using C9. Stat, basic stat, one sample Z, sample in a column. We're going to use weight. The known standard deviation in part, in, in part A was 121.8. And we are doing a 99% confidence interval. Click OK and click OK, and there's the 99% confidence interval. The part B is done just as we did it a minute ago. And so the rest of these are all using the mean, right? Find the confidence interval for the mean. This is, there is no population standard deviation given, so this is a 1T. Again, a 1T. Find the population standard deviation for the population, or confidence interval for the population mean. That is a 1T. Okay, so the rest of these are um, all confidence intervals for the mean. The only one that was a 1Z was number 10, part A. All right, so that is the end of lab 7. So completed. If you have any questions, please let me know. Now.